Today we're going to learn the definition of a mixed linear in circle. So suppose you have a triangle and you take its circumcircle. The mixed linear in circle is the circle that is tangent to two of the sides of the triangle, for example this one and this one, and it's also tangent to its circumcircle. So in this case, this circle is the mixed linear in circle of this triangle with respect to this vertex, because it's tangent to the circumcircle at this point, which is located on this arc. There exist two more mixed linear in circles, one here and one here. We call it an in-circle because it's internally tangent to the circumcircle, but there also exists mixed linear x-circles. They're also tangent to this line and this line, but they're tangent to the circumcircle externally, so it may look something like that. The main topic for today is to prove Verrier's lemma, which is the lemma that tells you that the in-center of the triangle lies on the line defined by the two points of tangency of the mixed linear in-circle with the two sides of the triangle. Since this is the in-circle, we know that this line is the angle bisector of this angle, and this line is the angle bisector of this angle. And we know that these angle bisectors intersect the circumcircle at points which are midpoints of the corresponding arcs. So this point is the midpoint of this arc, and this point is the midpoint of this arc. Now take a look at this. We have a chord in the circle, and we have this circle, which is tangent to this chord at this point, and it is also tangent to the circumcircle at this point. Then we take the line defined by this point and this point, this line, and we know that it must intersect the circumcircle at a point that is the midpoint of this arc defined by the chord. And therefore, this angle bisector and this line here intersect the circumcircle at the same point, the midpoint of this arc. Similarly, if we take this line defined by the point of tangency of the two circles and the point of tangency of the mixed linear in circle and this line, so if we take this line, it would intersect this circle at this point, which would be the midpoint of this arc, and this angle bisector intersects the circumcircle at the same midpoint of this arc. Now let's call this point A1, this point B1, this C1, this C2, this B2, and this A2. And let's apply Pascal's theorem for the hexagon A1, B1, C1, C2, B2, A2. We get that the intersection point of A1, B2 and B1, A2, which is this point, the intersection point of A1, C2 and C1, A2, which is this point, and the intersection of B1, C2 and C1, B2, which is this point, these three points lie on a straight line, which is exactly what we needed to prove, that the in-center of the triangle lies on the line defined by the two tangency points here and here. Furthermore, this line and this line are the tangent lines from B2 to the mixed linear in circle, and therefore the distance between B2 and this point is the same as the distance between B2 and this point. And so this triangle is isosceles. We know that this is the angle bisector of this angle because this is the in center of the triangle, and therefore it must also be the median and the altitude in this isosceles triangle. And therefore, this distance equals this distance. So the in-center is the midpoint of the segment defined by the two points of tangency of the mixed linear in-circle with the sides of the triangle. Here's how the picture looks like when we have a triangle and we take one of its mixed linear x-circles. It's tangent to this line, this line, and externally to the circumcircle at this point. Then we would expect if we take the points of tangency here and here with the two lines, and we take the midpoint of this segment, we would expect this midpoint to be exactly the x-center of the triangle with respect to this vertex, which is the center of the x-circle on this side of the triangle. Let this point be the midpoint of this arc here, so from this point to this point, and let this point be the midpoint of this arc here, so from this point to this point. We know that if we take this to be the x-center of the triangle on this side, then this here is the external angle bisector of this angle, and this here would be the external angle bisector of this angle. And these external angle bisectors intersect the circumcircle of the triangle at exactly this point and this point, the midpoint of this arc here and the midpoint of this arc here. Now let's take this point of tangency and this point of tangency and let's connect them with a line and intersect with the circumcircle here then it turns out that this point is exactly the same point, the midpoint of this arc. Indeed, consider a homotity centered here that transforms this circle into this circle. 
then this point would go to this point, and this line would go to a parallel line right here that would touch the image, this circle, at this point. But now a parallel line to this one touches this circumcircle at this point, which means that this arc must equal this arc. And so this point is the midpoint of this arc here. Analogously, if we connect this tangency point and this tangency point and we intersect with this circumcircle, it would go exactly here at the midpoint of that arc. And finally, let's apply Pascal's theorem for the quadrilateral A1, this point, B2, this point, C2, this point, A2, this point, B1, this point, and C1, which is this point. Then A1, B2 intersects A2, B1 at the X circle of the triangle, A1, C2 intersects C1, A2 at this point of tangency, and B1, C2 intersects C1, B2 at this point of tangency. And by Pascal's theorem, these three points lie on a straight line. And now that we've proven that the X circle lies on this segment, we can also prove that it's the midpoint of this segment. Since we know that this and this are tangent lines to this circle from this point, therefore this length equals this length, and so this triangle here is isosceles, and we know that this is the angle bisector of this angle, and therefore it is not only the angle bisector, but it's the median and it's the altitude in this triangle. Here's the optional problem. We have a triangle, this is its circumcircle, and this is one of its mixed linear incircles, and it touches the circumcircle at this point. This point here is the in-center of the triangle, so it's the center of the in-circle, and this point here is the midpoint of this arc in the circle. Or in other words, you may think of that point as the intersection of the perpendicular bisector of this side of the triangle with the circumcircle. We need to prove that this point of tangency, this in-center, and this midpoint of the arc lie on a straight line. And here's the solution. First of all, let's notice two facts. The first fact is that from Verrier's lemma, the in-center of the triangle lies on this segment defined by the two points of tangency of the mixed linear in-circle, and it's actually the midpoint of this segment. And the second thing to notice is that since this arc equals this arc, it means that this angle equals this angle because those angles correspond to the two arcs, where these angles are defined with respect to this point here. So from this point to this point to this point, that's this angle, and from this point to this point to this point, that's this angle. This means that if we prove that this line, defined by this point and this point, is the angle bisector of this angle, it would follow that this point, this point, and this point lie on the straight line, and that would be the angle bisector of this angle. Let this angle here be gamma. We know that this length equals this length because these are tangent lines to this circle from this point. Then this is an isosceles triangle, and since this angle is gamma, then this angle equals this angle equals 90 minus gamma over 2. And from this cyclic quadrilateral, we get that this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees, and so this angle must be 180 minus gamma. We need to prove that this line is the angle bisector of this angle, so essentially we need to prove that this angle is half of this angle, so we need to prove that this angle is 90 minus gamma over 2. But we know that this angle is 90 minus gamma over 2. And so essentially we need to prove that this quadrilateral here is cyclic, because if we prove that it's cyclic, it would follow that this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees, this is 90 plus gamma over 2, and so this one must be 90 minus gamma over 2 as desired. Let the angles of the triangle be alpha, beta, and gamma. Then, since this here is an angle bisector of this angle, then this angle equals this angle equals beta over 2, and this is an angle bisector of course, because this here is the in-center of the triangle. We know that this angle is 90 minus gamma over 2, and therefore this angle is 90 plus gamma over 2, and therefore this angle must be alpha over 2, because alpha over 2 plus beta over 2 plus this angle 90 plus gamma over 2 would give us 90 plus alpha over 2 plus beta over 2 plus gamma over 2, and the sum alpha over 2 plus beta over 2 plus gamma over 2 is 90 degrees, and so the sum of the angles in this triangle would be 180 degrees. So what we have to prove is that this red angle equals this red angle equals alpha over 2. Well, consider the following. We have a circle, we have another circle tangent to that circle at this point, and then we have a line that intersects the circle at this point and this point, and is tangent to this circle here at this point. Then, if we take this line and intersect it with this circle here, then this must be the midpoint of this arc. And this arc corresponds to the angle alpha in the circle, and therefore this must be half of that, so it must correspond to the angle alpha over 2, and therefore this angle here, which corresponds to this arc, must be alpha over 2. 
from here it follows that this is a cyclic quadrilateral since this angle equals this angle, and therefore this is the angle bisector of this angle as desired. This was the last element from this course. Congratulations! If you've reached this point, it means that you have enough capabilities to solve IMO problems. You know all the basic theory you need, and also you learned some useful tricks, lemmas, and calculation-based approaches which you can use to solve the problems. And now it's time for practice. I'll be giving you one problem, and in the next video I'll present the solution, and I'll give another problem for the next video, and so on and so on. You're going to see how the elements are going to be applied in the solutions of these problems over and over and over again, and this would help you memorize the elements more easily and learn how to apply them in different situations. Please try to solve each problem yourself before looking at the solution. In time, I hope that all these 101 elements will become something like a habit to you, so that you can see them in problems without even thinking about them. For example, at this point, it should be a habit for you to find the third angle in the triangle when you know the values of the other two angles. If you've made most of the elements like a habit, then you'll be solving problems like a pro. Thank you for taking the course, and good luck! Here's the first practice problem. You have a triangle, and this is its orthocenter, so this is an altitude, this is an altitude, and this is an altitude. And then you take the symmetric point of this one with respect to this one, and it's here, and the symmetric point of this one with respect to this one, so it's here. And then you take a point here, such that this length is three times as much as this length. You need to prove that this point, this point, this point, and this point lie on one circle. 